Half-Life Alex has one of the coolest and the most unique inventory slash weapon systems that I have seen in any VR game. And the overall idea is pretty simple. All you do is you press a button, then you have one of several things you can do. You flip your hand in one of four directions in order to select a weapon, or you just let go of the button without moving your hand very much, and you don't select any weapon at all. Your hand just remains open. It's a very simple and honestly ingenious solution that solves a lot of problems that you see with other inventory and weapon systems in other games. Say for example in shooters, rather than having to look down and see everything that you have equipped, everything is literally at your fingertips. All you have to do is press a button and you see everything that you have. In addition to this, it re doesn't require you to take your eyes off of what's going on around you because you can simply put your hand in front of you, hit that button and see everything you have right there and then without having to look down, up or in any other direction to see what you have. It's a very interesting solution and honestly I'm surprised that it's not seen a lot more in other games. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you exactly how we can set this up very simply using just a UI, an actor, and spawning it in the player. But before we jump to that, if you want to help support VR Playground, consider becoming a member down below. We do live Q&A so that way you can get your question answered off of any tutorial that you want to know and you get early access to any upcoming tutorials as well. And with that, let's jump right in the video. So let me go and show you how this functions. So it's actually pretty simple. I have this bound to the valve index. So all I do is I hold down an A button. So if I hold down this one, for example, then you can see I get this whole little wheel here. Um, these are just some simple images that I made to show what uh, each one is. So for example, the up and down are the same. The left and the right ones are both the same because we really only have two objects. We can easily grab the uh, grabbable small cubes and the pistols here is what they're called now these are both scaled down so just keep in mind that when these spawn these will be a lot bigger and this does also work with the left hand and if i hit the right hand then the right hand takes over so if for example i go and grab the pistol here you'll see i get the full size pistol this is the you know exact one to one scale so i can go and spawn this and i can still use it like a regular gun the only thing i did disable the grabbing altogether um, now this is just something that I did just so things can't be dropped if they're selected from the weapon wheel You don't have to do this. This was just something that I did just for the sake of this tutorial And so I can go and exit that out and I can go ahead and do let's do the cube next again This is the full size of the cube and then I can just go ahead and hit a real quick and it'll just drop me straight out So I can hit it and then my hand will move in any or my hand can move in any direction and I can choose whichever button I want. Now this is just a very simple UI. Uh, this is probably the simplest way you can put up a wheel just like this. So uh, just whatever direction I move my hand then there's a widget interaction component that follows it. And same thing with the left hand so I can have like just pistols in both hands for example and just fire them both like crazy. Um, there we go. I can also start hitting those. And of course, again, I can hit both of them at the same time. Now, there are, of course, a few small issues. Uh, the rotation, for example, you may have noticed it does kind of go off to the right if my hand is at a funny angle um, that it's not really liking. But for the most part, this does work pretty well. If you have your hand out, it will work just as you expect for it to. So let's go and jump to the tutorial and I can show you exactly how all this is done. Now let's start by creating our UI. Now we're gonna come back to this a few times, but it's nice to get this started. So that way we're able to go on to creating our actor and getting this spawned in the player. So to start out, I'm gonna create a new folder called UI. I'm going to create a widget blueprint in this folder. This, this blueprint is going to be what actually contains the UI that we're using in order to select our various weapon or inventory items. Once we're in this UI, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to go and drop in a canvas panel so that way we can position around our buttons. And then I'm going to put in four buttons. I'm going to call these up button, left button, right button, and down button. A lot of buttons I know. And all these buttons are going to represent directions that the players are able to move their hands in order to actually select that item. Now I should also note that I do recommend these buttons being pretty big. If they are too small, then it becomes a little bit difficult for players to easily flick their hands in any direction and be able to select what that button is going to give the player. So I would just recommend having this at a pretty good size. I'm gonna set this at 175 by 175 for this example because I find that this is a really good minimum point at least. 
In addition to this, I'm also going to go ahead and modify the appearance of these buttons. And I'm gonna do this by go ahead and giving the top and bottom one both this sort of pistol icon that I've created and the left and right one are both going to contain these cube ones that I have here. I'm also going to see if I can get rid of these outlines real quick. Uh, it does actually take me a second to figure out what specifically is causing this. So uh, just bear with me for a second while I get rid of these outlines. And in addition to this, I'm also going to go ahead and modify the hovered state. The hovered state isn't going to be too much different. All I'm going to do is I'm going to set these to the same exact image as before. And then I'm just going to make these a bright red. So that way I can tell which one's actually being hovered. The default colors are a little bit close, so it can be a little bit difficult. And that's why I am making sure that these are drastically different colors and we can easily figure out which one the player is actually trying to select. Now we'll go and leave the UI alone for now. We will be coming back periodically in order to mess around with the event graph because this is sort of a two way thing where we need to modify both the UI as well as our actor that we're going to create. So I'm going to go and leave this UI alone and then we'll also come back again at the very end in order to modify the event graph to spawn in the pistol, the grabbable small cube and attach them to the player. Next, I'm going to create a new folder called blueprints and in here, I'm going to call this new actor a, the wheel selection UI. And this is what's going to actually allow for us to select anything within this sort of inventory wheel. So I'm gonna start by giving this a widget interaction component. I'm going to go and move this back a little bit as well. The reason for this is that origin point is right where the hand is going to spawn. So if we move it back, it tends to work just a little bit better. And then in addition to this, I'm also going to give this actor a widget. Now this widget is going to be that same UI that we just set up. I'm going to pull that forward and I'm going to turn it around so that way it's facing the same direction as our widget interaction component. In addition to this, I'm also going to go ahead and increase that draw size. You may see that it's clipping out a little bit here because that draw size is a bit too small. So I'm going to increase that draw size so we actually see the whole thing. And then I'm going to scale this down as well. In addition to this, we also need to change the trace channel in the widget interaction component. If you'll look right now, you'll see that it's actually set to visibility right now. But if we jump to the widget and we scroll down a little bit to the collision, we'll see that the widget itself is actually world dynamic. So we need to change that trace channel from visibility to world dynamic in order for these to actually be able to detect one another. Next, let's go ahead and jump into the event graph. Now we will be using the begin play and the event tick, but I'll go and remove the actor begin overlap because that is not going to be necessary for this tutorial. We'll start with the event tick because this is honestly the easiest part and we'll start by creating a variable called motion controller and this is going to be a motion controller component of course. In addition to this, if we go into the details, I wanna make sure that this is instance editable and that this is exposed on spawn. What this will allow for us to do is it'll allow for us to set the motion controller right as we spawn this actor because we'll spawn it each and every time that the player wants to select something from that wheel. So I'm going to make sure that this is exposed on spawn so we can instantly just feed in that motion controller that we're using. Now, as a precaution, I'm going to go and make sure that this motion controller is valid. And if it's not, then we're just going to destroy it. Now, is not valid should never be the case. This should always be valid, but I'm just putting this as a small precaution just to make sure that we do actually have a motion controller reference. In addition to this, we're going to get the world location of the motion controller, as well as the world location of the widget interaction component. Now, this is pretty easy. All we're going to do is we're going to take the world location of the widget interaction component, and we're going to find the look at rotation to the world location of the motion controller. Then finally, all we're going to do is we're going to take that widget interaction component and we want to set the world rotation equal to this find look at rotation. Once this is done, I'm also going to put together a quick custom event. I'm going to call this select. And all this is going to do is this is going to select whatever the widget interaction component is currently pointed at. So I'm going to go and take the widget interaction component. We're going to press pointer key. This is going to be a left mouse button, by the way. And then once we've selected this, we're going to assume that we're all done with this little wheel and we're just going to destroy the actor. Now, finally, we can come back up to the begin play. But before we can do anything to this begin play, we need to go back to the UI real quick. And in the event graph for this UI, we need to make sure that the UI's event graph also has a motion controller component variable. 
This is because we need to actually access the motion controller so that way we can choose what hand is actually being told to hold anything from this inventory. So we're going to take the widget, then we're going to get the user widget object, cast it to that UI that we created, and then once we have that, we're going to set the motion controller in the UI's event graph to the same one that we're getting in the actor itself. Once this is all done, we can go and close down this actor and then we can jump into the VR pawn. Now in the VR pawn, we're gonna be doing a couple optional things as well. First off, I'm going to remove these widget interaction components that we have in the VR pawn. Sometimes these can interfere with one another. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove these because we're not gonna be using these. Then in addition, this is also another option. I'm going to go and detach the grab left as well as the grab right. Now, the only reason I'm doing this is because I'm assuming in this case, anything that we get from that little weapon wheel is going to solely be held by the player and the player's not really going to be able to grab anything else. Of course, this probably isn't reasonable in most other scenarios, but I'm just going to go and disconnect this so that way we're able to easily use that uh, weapon wheel as it's intended to be used. Now, once we've disconnected the grab left and grab right, we now need to be able to actually open up our weapon wheel. So we're going to need to create a new input for that. In case you're unfamiliar with this, we jump into the input and then the actions folder. And then in here, we need to create two input actions. These are both going to be the names of the actual inputs that we're going to be using. So in this case, I'm going to call them IA left A button and IA right A button. Then if we go back a folder to that inputs folder after we save this, then we can go ahead and open up the IMC default. This actually gets loaded up by the VR pawn when the VR pawn gets spawned in. So I know that this is being used by the player. In here, I'm going to add in two mappings. Both these mappings are going to be those same input actions we just created, the IA left A button and the IA right button. And then in here is also where we set what these buttons are tied to. In this case, I'm only going to set this up for the Valve Index because that's the headset that I am using currently. But if you're using the Quest or a Windows Mixed Reality headset or whatever else that you may have, you can add those in or you can swap that out instead if you only need a single headset like I do here. With that all out of the way, we can go and jump back into the VR Pond's event graph. And then in here, we can find that IA left A button and the IA right A button. Once we have both these inputs in, let's go and start off with the left A button. On the left A button, on started, we want to spawn an actor. And this actor is going to be the wheel selection UI. Now, once we spawn this, we also need to drop in a transform. So I'll go and grab our motion controller left, and then I'll get the world transform. Now we need to make a few modifications here in order to make this look a little bit nicer for the player. So I'm going to go and split these transforms here. And the location can go in just as it is right here. You don't need to do anything to the location. The rotation, however, does need to be modified. All we need to pass through for the rotation is the Z. If you'd like, you can pass in the X and Y if you want to add in either the roll or the pitch value. But I find that just passing in the Z tends to work. Finally, you'll notice on the spawn actor that we now have this motion controller variable because we are spawning this actor and we set this variable to be exposed on spawn. So we easily get access to this right here. So I'll go and pass in that motion controller left as the motion controller variable. Then finally, we'll go ahead and take this wheel selection UI and we want to promote this to a variable. Now the only reason we're promoting this to a variable is this is going to allow for us to hit the select when we're finished hitting the A button. And that's also going to allow for us to destroy this actor as well when we're all done. With it. In order to do this, just to be precautious, I'm going to go and convert this to a validated get. And then on completed, all we're going to do is we're going to run that select event that we created earlier. Once we're all done with this, we're going to do the same thing for the right hand. We're also going to be coming back to the left hand just to add in a couple things at the end, but we need to make sure that we have that right hand variable as well. So I'm just going to leave that for now. I'm going to go and add in the motion controller and I'm going to promote the right hand weapon wheel selection UI to its own variable as well. Now finally, as an additional option, if you would like, you can check to see if the opposing hand wheel UI is valid. If this is valid, then that means that we have both of them open at the same time. Now, again, this isn't necessary, but sometimes you only want one open. And if this is the case, then what we want to do is just go and destroy the other hands wheel selection.
Now something I did almost forget, right before we spawned the wheel selection UI on both our left and right hand, we also want to make sure that there is no longer anything being held in our hand. This is going to allow for us to just drop whatever it is that we're holding. So I'll go and get the held component left. And then if it's not valid, we just want to pass that through straight to the wheel selection UI. And the whole reason we're doing this is because if there isn't anything valid, we can get a warning. It won't cause any crashes. It can just be very annoying to get. Then, but assuming that this is valid, we're going to get the owner of the held component left. And we just want to destroy this actor before continuing on to spawn in our wheel selection UI. And we want to do this for both the left and the right hand. Now finally, we can go ahead and jump back into the UI and in here, we're going to finish off that event graph and spawn everything that we need. So in here on the event construct, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we have our VR pawn as a variable reference. This is gonna make things a little bit easier later on. So I'm going to get the player pawn. I'm going to cast this to a VR pawn and then I'm going to promote this to a variable here in the UI. Next, we need to detect when any of the buttons are pressed. So jumping back into the designer, I'm going to go through, select each and every button, and then for each button, I'm going to add the on press event. It's going to allow for us to actually detect when any of these buttons are pressed. So that way we can actually determine what we need to spawn and what hand we're spawning it to. Now, as I had said earlier, we're only going to be spawning two items, the grabbable small cube and the pistol, since these are the only two grabbable objects that we have in the default template. So these are what we're going to be spawning. So what I'm gonna do is the up and down buttons are both going to spawn the pistol and the left and right ones will both spawn the grabbable small cubes. We're going to start off with the pistol. For the pistol, we want to spawn an actor. Of course, this is going to be a pistol. And like I said, we're going to do this on both up and down. Then the spawn transform is going to be the motion controllers world transform. Now it's going to be the world transform exactly. We're not going to be making any modifications to it. You can if it's necessary for what you're spawning, but in most cases, you won't need to do anything additional here. Now, once we've spawned our pistol, next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to wanna see if this pistol has the component grab component. Now, obviously we already know it does because this is something that can be grabbed. So we're going to take this grab component and we're going to try grab on it. Now, try grab does also require the motion controller. So we'll go and pass that in as well. And then we wanna take this motion controller and we wanna check its motion source to see if it is equal to either left or right. In this case, I'm going to select left just very simple and then we're going to go and feed this into a branch now after this branch we do need to set either our held component left or our held component right in our vr pawn now if you recall in the vr pawn we have the held component left as well as the held component right that both reference what is currently being held in the hand now before we can actually finish off our spawning we actually need to make sure that these get set so what we want to do is back in the VR pawn, we just want to make sure that this held component left gets set if this motion source is a left hand and that the held component right gets set if this is a motion source right. And that's it. And the nice thing about this whole, this whole line of code is this can now be duplicated just straight over to our left and right buttons. All we need to do is copy this, bring this down. And all we need to do is we need to change this class from pistol to grabbable small cube. The other thing that we're of course going to be grabbing. And that's it. Assuming everything has been done correctly, you now have a very simple UI that allows for you to select any one of four, or you could even add in more objects to select from in this UI. It's really that simple. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And I also want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.